I want to say hello, dear educators. What a crazy year it has been. I want to give you a much humble and appreciative thank you for going through what I think was probably the most wackadoodle year you have ever had as an educator. I hope you know how much myself and other people really really appreciate you. I know some of you might be new to me, so let me give you a quick hello. My name is Leslie Fisher, as Ann mentioned, based out of Southern California. I, for a living, travel the country, sometimes the world, in better times, keynoting and feature speaking at education technology conferences. I was and continue to be a struggling learner. Um, I never had the guts to be a teacher in the class because I struggle so much with too much content. And at some point when I learned more and more about technology, it let me be my own learner. It turns out I was a lifelong learner. So I love education technology, and I love the difference that it can make for a teacher as well as a student. So what I'm going to do, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to hurt your brain because I am just going to stuff it filled with stuff. Things that I think are engaging, things that I think are fun. And of course, we're also going to talk a little bit uh, about Kahoot because they've announced a few things. I don't have any slides. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants. Uh, are you ready to go? Ready, ready, ready? Let's dive in, my friends. So what I want to do is let's get my, um, my share screen going and clean up a little bit on, on my mess. And what I want to do is I want to I want to talk about what I think is one of the cooler things. Well, first of all, let's just stop right here. I need to share something with you. And I'm gonna be curious how many of you don't know this. While we were setting up, while I was setting up for uh, this, this webinar, Seeger from Kahoot goes, hey, can you zoom in your screen? I'm like, well, you know, Zoom doesn't show up. You know, it, it, it's tough to zoom on a Mac. He goes, no, 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 no. Go to the three dots in your browser. And there's an option to zoom your screen so my audience can see things better. Does anyone else want to admit that you had no idea that this was hiding in here? And also, if you are like, well, is it in Chrome? It is absolutely in Chrome. And Megan, you must have been in a presentation with me because I have always said there is goodness hiding in the three dots. So here I am in Chrome and now I can come in here and I can head right back and I can zoom that in. Look at that. How many we have, we've already learned something and I haven't gone over my official content. All thanks to Seeger. So Seeger Kahoot. Woo! He has probably uh, upgraded all of my future webinars. If you want to learn a little bit more about me, I'm just going to really quick quickly shoot you my URL to my website. It's simply my name, lesliefisher.com. I absolutely love getting to support educators. And I've been doing a lot of different free webinars, uh, conferences, thank goodness, are beginning to pop up again. So feel free to head to my website, and that is where you can learn more about me. And if I look a little familiar or sound familiar, but I don't look familiar, uh, you might have seen me present before I decided to chop off all my hair. <laughs> so let's, let's just jump into it, my friends. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about what I think is one of the cooler solutions that I saw. We had, and I'm going to try my best to keep away from those buzzwords that we've been using this past year. Um, we had a really interesting year. And what I saw is I saw a lot of companies such as Kahoot make some really profound changes to their product, mainly based on the unique learning dynamic that we were in and also based on requests. And I think, and I hope you would agree, that a lot of changes that were made were very helpful in the world of assistive technology. I, as a struggling reader, highly rely on something called immersive reader. If you're new to me and you haven't heard of immersive reader, I would tell you to please put that in your notes to learn more about it. If you were together with me last year here at the summit, I had a chance to show immersive reader. It helps me as a struggling reader read more effectively. Anything that makes, the, makes it easier for both the student and the teacher is awesome. So I'm going to talk to you about PowerPoint. Yes, PowerPoint. I am an Apple user. I worked at Apple for 10 years. Um, I think I was conditioned not to talk about Microsoft. And it's been an interesting journey for me uh, because I now use so many more Microsoft products 
And I remember running from PowerPoint like four years ago. I'm like, I'm never coming back to you, PowerPoint. It's no way. And now here I am. I crawled back a couple of years ago and went, sorry, but PowerPoint has really upped their game. I now use PowerPoint exclusively. And there's a lot of reasons why I use PowerPoint. And I want to share um, with you a couple things that I don't know if you know are in PowerPoint. And then I want to show you something that was just announced. So let's dive in. Uh, I'm currently, I, I'm opening up this demo uh, presentation. And if you did not know this, I'm going to click on slideshow. If you did not know this, uh, PowerPoint has the ability to show subtitles, not just subtitles in the language I'm speaking but subtitles in a different language. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, I'm speaking English and we have a global audience. So can someone just quickly in chat as I, I, as I fight a fly, can someone just quickly in chat, who speaks another language instead of English? Then you can be my, my go-to to say, this is going to look halfway decent. I'm curious. <laughs> By the way, the, the Portuguese wins. Um, uh, this fly is going to be obviously a co-host. You can't see it. We already got our, our first person said Portuguese. So we're going with Portuguese. But look at this. How? Okay, can I just stop real quick? I hate to yammer, but I I'm hoping you're enjoying yourself. And I just want to yammer and say this really quickly. This, these past 15 months have not been the best. But think about this. You are currently learning as a global audience. How cool is that? We are together and we're learning as a global audience audience. I think that for me is one of the, the, the kind of warm, fuzzy takeaways that I've had during this time. So I click on slideshow. I come in to use subtitles. My spoken language is English. So I'm going to come in here and select English, but my subtitle language is going to be, and I'm going to select Portuguese. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click on, and I'm going to say, play this from the beginning. And now it's going to click into slideshow mode. And now that it is in slideshow mode, uh, I'm going to make sure that I toggle on captions and we'll wait a moment. And if everything goes okay, where's my friend that speaks Portuguese that will say to me, indeed, Leslie, this is working. What you're saying is showing up in closed captions. Uh, so how many of you, look at the wows. I love this. Did I just teach some people some new things? If I did, uh, color me a happy person. Uh, there is support for 72 different languages with closed captions in PowerPoint. And this is such a helpful assistive feature. And I love watching everyone be so excited about this. But what we're going to do is we are going to take this up to another level. We have a lot of people in here. So we might break the next thing I'm about to show. But are you ready to possibly break the internet? I think it's kind of a fun thing when you're learning and you're so engaged that you break the internet. So are you ready for a possible internet break? So I'm going to click on escape. And when I click on escape, I'm still here in the slideshow. That is where I brought up subtitles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the next area because I made the English language learner students happy. I made the Portuguese language learners happy. But let's say you're in a group and you have a student that speaks Japanese. And, and I mean, if I scroll up here, we had Arabic, we had Hebrew, we had all of these amazing different languages. So I want to show you, like I said, one of my favorite things that was released during the pandemic. It is user limited. So we're going to find out together. So here we go. To the left, once again, I am in, very important to mention, I am in PowerPoint online. PowerPoint for, uh, for Mac and PC also has subtitles. PowerPoint online is the only place that you can do this. Also very important to mention, you as an educator qualify for Office 365 for free. If you're an educator, you qualify for free. So here we go. And Lourdes just says this. Lourdes just said, the challenge becomes when you have speakers of different languages in one room, can each learner select their own language? Can the presenter select more than one language? Lourdes, it's like I paid you to ask that question. So here we go. I'm still in slideshow. I'm now going to click on present live. When I click on present live, I can say only let people in my organization see this. We are not in the same organization, so I'm going to say anyone. And we're going to head right back to here. 
You do not have to participate in this if you do not want to, but feel free to grab your mobile device. Feel free to bring up a new web tab. If you have a mobile device, simply scan that QR code. If you are using a web tab, simply type in the ppt.ms slash whatever the heck you, that says, and let's watch the numbers move together. So look at all of you join in. Now, for those of you that are joining in, what you should be seeing is you should be seeing my voice or the text showing up uh, as you're joining. And my friends, look in the lower left corner. And if you look in the lower left corner, you have the ability to change it into any language that you want, as long as it's one of the 72 supported languages. So if you didn't, um, if, you, if I didn't choose your language earlier, guess what? Now you can see it. And so that answers the question that Lourdes had. And then look, you've discovered it. There's reactions. Look at my screen light up with reactions. Uh, and that's just a beautiful thing. I'm, I hope you don't mind because so far we have 700 people logged in and we're going to find out together. If you're teaching 724 kids at the same time, we need to talk to your, your principal, but let's come in here and let's go into the slideshow and let's see if this works okay. I've never had 700. Did your slides change? Let me know, YouTube chat. Did it change? So um, I'm hoping you can now see this the slideshow. Oh, that's right. You're probably on a lag. I forgot about it. Um, it probably will take a moment. Yep, perfect. So now I'm going to go to the next slide. So what's happening is I'm yammering, and it is still in your language, and I'm now able to take you through these slides. I love this. I can tell by your reaction um, that you love this too, and there is so much goodness hiding in PowerPoint. It's amazing, and I, I just, I, I was so so looking forward to, to sharing this with you. So I absolutely love your, your happy feedback. Um, I know that some of you have questions. I think Isabella, my, my, my friend, is going to try to gather some of these. Um, and so let's head to the end of this presentation, because when I head to the end, um, ed, uh, end of this presentation, and by the way, once again, this is just one of so many things that PowerPoint does. It is mind-bogglingly good. Um, and now, if this goes, if this is correct, this should be uh, giving you an evaluation form. So you should now be uh, getting an evaluation form uh, to fill out. Now, the educator in you and the supportive educator of me would say, can we customize that form? And the answer is not yet. But anytime you hear a company say the word yet, I have a feeling in the future, how, think about that. How cool would that be that you take someone through a PowerPoint Live and when you take them through a PowerPoint Live uh, at the end, then maybe you, you give them a little quiz or you ask them some questions. So once again, uh, and people are, uh, so let, let me just once again reiterate PowerPoint. I did this on PowerPoint for the web, which is part of Office 365, which you get for free because you're an educator. Once you make slides, you click on slideshow and there is the subtitle option I showed, which also works on PowerPoint for Mac and PowerPoint for Windows. And then to the left of it, this is web only. This is uh, present live, which is what we just did to create that beautiful harmony of all of the different languages changing. So uh, that, that was fun. I always, I just, I love hanging out with a, a couple hundred curious learners or many hundreds uh, curious learners. Uh, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna move on to the next thing, but we're gonna stay in PowerPoint land. And uh, so this is a newer feature. And one of the things that PowerPoint as, as well as even uh, Google Slides has support up for, is it has support for the ability for me to accidentally drag my mouse to the craziest places. I think my mouse is happier than me. All right, here we go. So I just transitioned to PowerPoint Macintosh. This would also work on PowerPoint PC. 
And I want to show you something that is new. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the insert menu. And when you use PowerPoint as an application, there is an option that says add-ins. And what these add-ins let you do is add in additional capabilities to PowerPoint. And there's a lot of options in here. And there's a new option in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on get add-ins. And when I do, I'm going to look for, I don't know if you've heard of this company. It's called Kahoot. And I'm going to search. And guess what, my friends? Kahoot now has an add-in for PowerPoint. I'm going to guess I surprised a few of you with that. Just a reminder, this is PowerPoint desktop for Mac or PC. I'm now going to click on add. And now this is going to add this add-in. So once it does, I'm going to do a quickie little update, it says here. And so now it says log into your Kahoot account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on login and it's going to ask me to log into my Kahoot account. And once I'm logged in, let's go, I'm logged in via Chrome. I am going to find the one, phew, I found it. And I, I'm gonna guess some of you were here last year. And I'm wondering if anyone put together my backdrop and what my, why my backdrop is my backdrop. I'm curious. Um, we, I asked for suggestions for something and Isabella was reading suggestions. I'm just waiting for someone in YouTube. And I know that it's on slow mode. So that means you can't type rapidly, um, rapidly into it. But I asked for suggestions and there we go, Gene, turtles in Italy. Uh, so we did the whole theme uh, last year uh, for when I created content was turtles in Italy. And we're not leaving that theme. Uh, we are going to keep this theme going. But as they made backdrops for the summit, did anyone pick out that this is turtles? You see, look, turtles in Italy, turtles in Italy. So they made this backdrop just for <laughs> turtles in Italy. So for those of you that remember um, uh, turtles in Italy, there you go. So I'm going to open up the turtles in Italy Kahoot that we made last year. And when I do that, there is an option in Kahoot to share the Kahoot and I'm gonna click on Share Kahoot. So when I click on Share Kahoot, you probably know this, but in case you didn't, look at all the different places you can share a Kahoot, and look, there's PowerPoint, there's all different ways, but we can also come in here and we can copy this. So I'm going to copy the link. So once again, I found any Kahoot that I made. I found any Kahoot that I made. I'm gonna head right back to PowerPoint. Because I've added the Kahoot add-in, I'm going to paste in that link. I'm going to click on Add Kahoot. And now this Kahoot will be part of this PowerPoint presentation. So you can create and, and distribute a Kahoot directly from PowerPoint. That lets you keep your teacher flow going, which I absolutely love. So. This is a great way that you could just stay in PowerPoint the whole time. So um, just a heads up for that. I hope you like it. Uh, and I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Dale, I love my teacher flow. I agree. I mean, that's an important thing is for you being able to get your flow on is what I would say. So there it is, a new feature from Kahoot. Uh, and that is the ability to automatically add a Kahoot um, uh, to your PowerPoint. So now that we did that, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the assistive features that are in Kahoot. And there's been a couple that have been added. So what I want to do is I want to bring over my iPhone and I'm going to guess, just a guess, I'm going to take a guess that a few of you are really surprised to see my iPhone just kind of hovering over my computer screen. And I will usually have people say, how are, how are you doing that? Um, so I'm gonna scroll down here just to show you. Uh, this is an application I absolutely love and it works on Mac or PC and it's called Reflector. 
And the current version of Reflector is Reflector 4. So if you ever wanted to display your iPhone or your Android on a Mac or a PC, you can do so with Reflector 4. And this is what I will use. Um, this is what I will use a lot to show my iPhone. If I was a Windows user, I could still show my iPhone. If I was using an Android, I could show it on my Mac. It all works together. It all works cohesively. It is only uh, $17 uh, US. I know that we have a, uh, a worldwide audience, but oh, it's $18. And there is a seven-day demo. So please feel free uh, to download the demo to see if it works. But this is what I use a lot of times to show my iPhone. And um, Reflector 4 is definitely a, a really nice, stable version of Reflector. So, all right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up the Kahoot app because I want to show you a new feature that just recently came out. So let's open this up. This was me practicing to make sure everything was going okay. <laughs> so here I am in the Kahoot app and I wanna show you a new feature. Also, I wanna give just a heads up about the Kahoot app because there are a lot of nice things hiding in here that you might not know about. So there is, you'll see under my Kahoots, you'll see the Turtles in Italy Kahoot that I was just using. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on it. And when I click on it, this is gonna pop up. And you're going to see that there are two modes. And there is a mode called study. And you wouldn't see this mode if you weren't using Kahoot from a mobile device. So this is a wonderful way for your, and your, your students to do exactly that, study. If you didn't know it, Kahoot has a study mode, which is really awesome. So I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna click on study. And when I click on study, I want you to take a look at this because once again, you've been in teacher mode and you might not have known that they released this over the past year. I can go in and I can make any Kahoot flashcard based. I can simply come in here and say, practice it. I don't want to take the official Kahoot. Let me just practice. I also can come in here and I can say, test myself. So I could just do a test. The other thing um, I can challenge my friends. So I could actually create teams and I can challenge my friends and we can see who does better on a Kahoot. So I'm curious, I'm curious. I'm gonna guess there are a few of you this is new for. And this is me once again, just pointing out, it's because this is mobile only. So make sure um, you discover this and that you share this with your students. There's another thing that is hiding in the mobile version and it's a new feature. And as a struggling learner, I love this thing. So I'm going to come in here and I could select anything. I could even play a Kahoot that a teacher assigned to me. This works anywhere. I just wanna make sure you realize this works anywhere. I'm gonna come in here and say that I wanna practice. And when I do, I'm going to go straight to the three dots in the Select upper right both corner. Select and Italy. And you're going to see that there is now an option that says read aloud. In fact, I do think I have audio on. Did you hear it read into my headphone? I'm not sure if, if you heard that or not. Uh, let me make sure I have audio on. Yes, I do. So hopefully, awesome. So I'm just going to hit on cancel. I'm going to select both the turtle in Italy. But now I'm going to be quiet because I want you to hear it read aloud the next question. Whenever it decides to load. Oh, I have to click next. Oh, it's a different type of question. I got it. So there's, uh, this was a, a legacy question, but it should be able to do read aloud. Let me jump out of here. It should be able to do read aloud for every question. I honestly don't know why it didn't work on that question, but read aloud is an option. You toggle it on and it will read the questions aloud, which I think is beautiful. So I'm gonna take my iPhone here and I'm going to move this out of the way. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to head into Kahoot because I wanna show you, and this is one of those things, of course, um, 
of course, you know, I, I, I'll sit there and I'll, I'll chat with my friends at Kahoot and go, I'd like to show this. I'm thinking of showing this. And, and Isabella, Isabella goes, well, you know, we just released a feature yesterday. And I, I don't know, you know, they're working on it still. So I don't know if you want to mention it. Uh, and then she showed me the feature and I went, yeah, I got to mention this. <laughs> so I think I'm going to show you something like super new and it might work. It might not. So far, it's been working great for me. Uh, and so here we go. So I'm going to click on create. So I'm going to click on create. Oops, let me actually let me do this. I got sidetracked. Apologies. I'm going to click on add question. So I am back in my turtles in Italy. Um, Kahoot, and I'm going to say add question. And so you'll notice that I have different options here. I also want to pay, uh, point out that I am on a premium version of Kahoot. And this feature, if I'm correct, is right now part of Kahoot Premium. And it's brand new, which is quiz plus audio. So what you're able to do as someone designing the question is you can create a quiz question, you can type in your audio. And I'm going to mention this because I surprised a few friends with this yesterday. So I'm going to type in the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And what this is, is this is um, an old typewriter test because this was the A through Z key on a typewriter. It still is. And so what I, I just laugh because I know a large percentage of you probably didn't know that because you're young, which is awesome. So my salute to you, uh, my salute to you. Um, oh, lazy dogs. Thank you, Glenn. Glenn, the older set is kicking in. <laughs> So uh, that's right, Holly, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Uh, but where's the Z now is it, there's there. So yeah, so I like to use that sentence because it's a fun conversation starter. Uh, but what I want to point out, uh, the slow green turtle jumped over the Italian peninsula. Rhonda, Rhonda, very nice, very nice. Uh, but what I want to point out is when I type that in, you're going to notice that it automatically detected the language. And I, I forget the amount of languages. I want to say there's 30 or so languages that are supported here, and it will auto detect that language. So now it auto detected English. I can click on add. And now this is going to be an audio question. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Did everyone hear that? Okay. It's a little low on my, on my headset, but I'll do it again. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Yay. So now I have the option if I wanted to, and I had the premium version of Kahoot, I have the option to add an audio question. My brain begins to think about this. Think about those younger learners that can't read yet, but they can go in and you can get them going on a Kahoot. They could use this. Think about someone who is working on language. Maybe that you're teaching them a new language and you could you know, use a fill-in, uh, for example, one of the questions in premium, I don't know if you know this, is you have an open-ended question option now in Kahoot if you're using Kahoot Premium. So you could come in here and make it open-ended. You could come in here and you could add that spoken word. If I come in here and to add media, you're going to see read aloud as an option. So now all of a sudden you could be asking a question in one language and then they're going to be typing in uh, the answer in a different. Someone just put listening comprehension. <sighs> Absolutely listening comprehension. What did you just hear? I mean, there is so many different things that you can do with this. So this is a really nice newer feature in Kahoot that I, I really, I really, really dig. So, so that's once again, the ability to add audio with a read aloud as a question. So I just think that that's awesome. What I wanna do is I want to show you another. And when you see me looking over here, this is me making sure that I'm showing everything uh, that I, I need to or that I should. I'm gonna add another question. And when I add another question, there is now an option. And this is cool. Even if you're using the free version of Kahoot, 
And I also at this moment want to say a big thank you to Kahoot because they are still constantly adding new features to Kahoot into the free version, which I think is really nice. And in this case, we also have a feature that used to be a premium feature that is now a free feature. If you didn't know this, now part of Kahoot Free is the ability to add a slide. So a slide is that perfect opportunity where you don't want to ask them a question. Maybe you want to educate them. Maybe you want that slide to be a supporting player to something you might be doing. You now have this um, in the free option. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to say add a slide. And I just want to give you a quick overview to what the dynamic looks like. I can come in here and say add media. Once again, I am in the premium version of Kahoot. So if you're on the free version, you will not see read aloud, but you will see the option to add a YouTube link. You could upload an image or you could head into the image library if you wanted to. I could also come in here, type a title. I can type in text. And one of the things, if you are using a premium version of Kahoot that you now have, is the ability to have different media for your slides. So now you have different layouts that you can use within Kahoot. So I can come in here and say big title, title and text, bullet points, and this is going to come in here and you have all these different options. And once again, that is if you are using that premium version of Kahoot, you now have the ability, including the background color, so you can change this up and that is part of premium. But kudos to Kahoot for uh, now adding slides as part of their free offering. I really dig that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say I'm done making this really interesting Kahoot so far. And I'm gonna, it even points out that I've made some boo-boos, but I'm simply just keeping this for now. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I want to come in here and I want to show you another feature that is in Kahoot. And this is part of Kahoot for free. And we're gonna head right back to my Turtles in Italy uh, Kahoot, and I'm gonna click on play. And when you click on play, we have the option to come in here and say, hold on, let me quickly, my phone is, I thought I muted my external line, I didn't. Uh, I can either teach this live, I could also assign it as a challenge. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say teach. So the idea with teach is that this would be played live with your students in the same room, or maybe you're displaying it on a screen so they can take it. Um, but I wanna point out something new, and this is another one that I'm curious if you knew existed. It's brand new. Show questions and answers on players' devices. Show question and answers on players' devices. This used to be something that you could only get in challenge mode. When you would put a, a Kahoot in challenge mode, the students would see the answers on their devices. So now you have the option to toggle this on. So if you have that shy student in the back of the room, if you have that student that needs to have a read aloud or whatnot, um, this is a beautiful new feature, and I'm going to guess a few of you did not know that this feature existed. So now a student can use the device and they can come in here and they can automatically see the answers on the device. So a really nice feature uh, that they just added to Kahoot. How are we doing, my friends? What I'm hoping is, I know I'm percolating your brain a little bit, but that, there's kind of a method to my madness for that. There's a reason I do that. I would rather give you a bunch of content and know that you find one or two gold little nuggets than, than no content at all. So what I wanna do is I'm going, to, um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to transition. And uh, we were talking about turtles in Italy. And I know some of you were not with us last year. I'm glad you're here with us this year. And the whole Turtles in Italy started with a solution called Wakelet. And I am curious, I'm, I'm going to guess we have a few people in our, in our time together that have not heard of Wakelet. And Wakelet is a beautiful way for you to compile a story. And Wakelet has been very instrumental during this unique learning dynamic because it lets you as a teacher put together content for your students, put together 
content for other teachers. It also uh, lets your students put together content um, into Wakelet as well. And if we scroll all the way down here, uh, you'll notice the When Turtles Go to Italy is right here. This is the one we created a year ago. And I loved that theme so much that I kept, as I showed Wakelet more and more, um, I showed it. Uh, I'm not, I want to make sure that I have time to go over a few other things. I also have time for Q&A, so I'm not going to be able to deep dive into Wakelet. But if you're new to it, and also my friends on YouTube, please feel free to share with others. Uh, if you love Wakelet and you're using it, I just saw someone mention um, that they used it every day. Uh, so it is completely free, by the way. I just saw that. So thank you, uh, um, YouTube friends, for filling that in. But this is a really easy way to paste in text, to add images, to upload a PDF. I can even come in here and say, add a Flipgrid video, add a YouTube video, add Google Drive, add OneDrive. And it's just a really nice way for, once again, either you or your students to create this content. So I know for some of you, this is super, super new. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to tell you about a change that happened in Wakelet since the time that some of us got together last year. And there is now something called Wakelet Spaces. Because one of the things that teachers were saying was, I want a place where my students can collaborate and create Wakelets together. I want a place where I can create a Wakelet and I can have other people add to it. So I'm now logged into Wakelet. And I'm going to come right here to where this plus sign is. And when I click on this plus sign, it's going to ask me to create a space. And I just have to tell this story. Uh, I, I, I did a webinar with, with someone from Wakelet, uh, Tejas from Wakelet, and he was talking about spaces. And, and he goes, yeah, so, you know, you could create a space. I could create a space. Like, you could have your space. I can have my space. And my, I started chuckling, and other people started chuckling as well. And he's like, he looked like, did I say something wrong? And I said, I said, MySpace. Tejas, have you ever heard of MySpace? Because I have never heard of MySpace. What do you mean MySpace? Like MySpace. And I said, you've never heard of a network called MySpace? He goes, I'd never heard of a network called MySpace. So I'm curious, who here in YouTube chat has not heard of MySpace? <laughs> and this is great, though. Not only are we a global audience, we're a global audience of different age ranges. And that's a beautiful way to learn. I just, I, just, um, I just read something that said, if you're over 50 and you do not have someone uh, 30 and under as part of your close network to learn how things are being discussed, you need to add someone in that age range. And I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. So, so I laughed when he said, uh, MySpace. And look, I could tell. <laughs> But this is showing, I know it's showing that some of us are older and some of us are not as old. But the thing is, is we're all together. We're all learning together, which, um, which I think is a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I'm going to name this uh, Kahoot Summit Space. <laughs> not my space, because I actually have that up here. I kept that, once, once that happened, I kept my space as a, as a joke. Uh, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create that. When I create this space, um, I now have the ability to add a collection just in this space. So I can create a collection just in this space. I can set it sharing that only people that are part of this space can see it. And another thing I can do is I can click here on members and I can invite members to this space with just a URL. And I think this is very important to mention because I've had people say to me, my students don't have email addresses. How can I do this? Or so you can create a space. And then you can invite students into the space with a link. Think about this for even small group work projects. You can create five different spaces and put four students into each of those spaces and they can collaborate together and create a wakelet. This was a beautiful new feature. And this is one of those features that I don't think if we didn't have our learning dynamic uh, that we had, I don't think we would, have, we would have had this. So I just really like this and I hope I hope this makes sense. And I can tell people are educating other people about, um, <laughs> about MySpace, which is, really, which is really fun. All right, my friends, we are going to move forward. And we are going to move forward with, uh, I, I do this for a living. I love, 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 love 
to show things that I think are going to help you with your pursuits as an educator or someone who supports educators. And I do this usually live. And when I learn about something, I get so excited. I'm like, I can't wait to see the looks on people's faces. And for, I did that. I remember when Kahoot first came out, I was like, huh. And I saw this and I went, holy smokes. And so I think I'm going to introduce you to, um, to a new thing. We'll find out together. And it's called Note. And please note the spelling. K-N-O-W-T. Kahoot and other products have taught us that the idea of gamification makes learning easier. I couldn't agree more. It makes it more fun. I just, I am more engaged when I have the ways that Kahoot sets up asking questions. Now, as a struggling learner, I'll tell you that I take terrible notes. And I am going to guess I have some brethren in the audience that they don't take notes that are good either. I think I have all my, my, my parts in place. And then I go back and I review the notes a couple of weeks later or a day before the test. And I realize these notes aren't good. Note was created by three students. I think at the time, two of them were in high school. One of them was in college. And what Note does is Note will let you have a notebook and you can create notes in here. You could also import notes here. Also, Note is completely free and that's important to mention. Also, Note, we're, we're dealing with a little bit of lag, which is bumming me out. Uh, but this happens sometimes. I might simply be talking to note if this keeps up. Uh, we'll find out together. And worse to worse, I can always toggle off my camera, but I feel like we're getting somewhere. I'm hoping we're getting somewhere. I'll think happy thoughts because really what I show you is, is hiding right in here. You know, we'll, we'll do it this way because this looks like it's showing up. Uh, and so we'll come in here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, you know what? It could just be not a happy kid. Wouldn't that be a bummer? We hit our first. We hit our first boo-boo. So I think they might be dealing with a little glitch in their system because all of this is showing up fine and this isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this example. So what Note lets you do is Note lets you create a note and then you can take a quiz on the notes that you take. And this quiz could have fill in the blanks. It could have all sorts of options. And so as I mentioned, this part isn't showing up. So yours came up fine, that's beautiful. Um, so what I'm going to do is one of the newer features they have is the ability to be quizzed on different books that they've placed in here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to art history. And when I click on art history, you're going to see that this pops up. And I am sorry, my friends, uh, it is, we'll come in here and we'll do chapter 18th, 14th century art. And here are all of the different things. These are like notes. So if I come in here and I click on this, I think, oh, good, yay. All right, so we're gonna play a game of make-believe. And the make-believe that we're going to play is that these are notes that I've typed in on my own. Are we okay with that make-believe? So these are notes that I typed in on my own and I can, once again, import notes. We're going to see if this works. Uh, what I did is I went to the upper right corner and I clicked on quiz. I'm gonna click on quiz and you'll see it's saying, do you want multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, historical ordering, true or false? And now I'm going to say quiz me. And when I say quiz me, what it's going to do is it's going to go over those notes that I took and it is going to quiz me if it works. But as I sit here watching the note bounce up and down, I think they might have a system that might be down or whatnot because this should be showing up already. Uh, and it's a bummer because this is awesome. I'm just gonna let it sit there and bounce uh, because if you, and someone just put this, where was this when I was at uni? I could not agree more. And I'm so bummed that this isn't working uh, because it. I would basically call it almost Kahoot, the Kahoot of notes. And I'm really bummed it's not working. I tested it earlier today, it was, they must be updating something. My heart is hurt, but what I'm hoping is, is you get a feel for, um, see how it's all spinning here. This is their, um, uh, you know what, here's what I can also do. We'll, we'll try this for fun. Well, someone can tell me, are you able to get into your notes? So we can always come here. I can type this in a different browser. 
because we're kind of okay on time because there's a couple other things that I want to show you. <laughs> Someone just said there's 2,000. There's 2,000 people in it. That could be it. We'll see if this works. But I'm seeing a lot of spinnies and I haven't, I would know this is not like, this is not like OneNote whatsoever. It's, it's a different, it is not as powerful as OneNote. It is not as powerful as Kahoot. But what it lets me do, um, let me just come in here and try to type in. We'll see if this works. If not, we'll just have to move forward and I'll, I'll whimper and be sad. What it lets me do, and what I think it also lets students do, obviously, is I can take notes. And when I take notes, if my notes don't make sense, then I'm sorry, if the quiz doesn't make sense, my notes don't make sense. So I'm able to run this as a quiz. Once I run this as a quiz, if the quiz didn't make sense, I need to head right back to my notes. No notes in my notebook. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, guess what? This might happen, people. This might happen. Happy thoughts, fluffy kittens. This might happen. What, what percentage choice do you, do you give me? I'm going with 50-50. All right. Something is definitely not, a quiz with this name has already been created. I apologize. It's so cool. I keep wanting to show this to you. And all it's doing is it's just messing up everywhere. Uh, they obviously are working on something. I am a glutton for punishment. So I am just going to, for fun, choose a completely different quiz, uh, which is fine with me. And we'll come in here to the notebook. I'm going to try it one more time. And then we're going to move on. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, take quiz. And then we're just going to move on because we've already spent too much time, but I think it makes sense to you. Okay, cross your fingers. We'll see. If not, we're moving forward. I have no idea what the answer is to this, but this is from the notes that were taken. So I'm going to say it's this one. Is it that one? Let's see if I got it right. So once again, these are typed notes that have turned it into a quiz. I'm going to leave it be because it's spinning around. I'm guessing they're making a chance, a, a change. But what I hope is, is that you have an idea on how this works. If you like Kahoot, and I love Kahoot, and I'm going to guess if you're part of this, you like Kahoot. If you like Kahoot, uh, this is like Kahoot for your notes. And it's Kahoot for your students' notes. If they type notes, the notes don't make sense. After they take a quiz, guess what? They should go back and they should edit their notes. And it's as easy as that. So what I want to do now, ooh, we only have a couple minutes left. I'm going to finish up with this because for me, this has been my new, kind of one of my new shiny objects. And um, my new shiny object is one that has been around for a while and it's Canva. And Canva, if you don't know Canva, Canva is a wonderful solution that has thousands of templates available to you on a variety of things from presentations uh, to creating flyers, uh, to doing Zoom backgrounds. It has so much to offer. But what a lot of people don't realize is that Canva now has Canva for Education. And what Canva for Education will do is Canva for Education makes everything that you normally would have to pay for in Canva absolutely free. Not only that, it gives you a class. So you have a class in Canva that you can add your students to, and they can collaborate together on content. Uh, I'm going to come in here to this existing presentation. Let's see how this goes, because I want to show you a few things that are hiding in Canva that you might not know about. And it's, I really dig getting a chance to show it because I've had so many people that have said, oh my gosh, I've been paying for the clip art or for graphics or whatnot. Uh, and all of that is completely free. It does look like this is becoming just simply a laggy situation. Uh, so I'm go not going to go too crazy in showing you a bunch of things, but I, I just want to make sure that you knew um, uh, that Canva had Canva for education. And if this pops up, I want to show you one of my favorite hidden 
thing that's in Canva for education. I'm going to click on the three dots. And we've already had a talk about the three dots a few times today. And when I click on the three dots, there is going to be an option for present and record. And this is a newer feature in Canva. And when I click on present and record, it is going to take this and turn it into a slideshow, but it is also going to toggle on my camera. And then what I'm able to do is I am able to come through and add a recording of my face. They can hear my voice. I can go through all of the slides in this presentation and it will record it. Not only will it record it, I can download it as a fully self-contained video file, or I can share the link and someone can click on the link and watch it. So you'll notice, you see, if there I am in the corner uh, moving my hands around. So it's a really, really nice feature. Um, I am going to, because I know we probably have some questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show my website one more time, because I think I've, I'm hopefully, I hopefully hope I made some new friends today. And I'm, I'm a lifelong learner that wasn't a learner while I was in school. And I have just simply been wanting to honor educators for the 24 years that I've been doing this. I know I showed you a lot, but it's simply my hope that you grabbed a couple items and you could take off and run with them and have fun and implement them in your classroom. Uh, let's continue learning together. You can simply find me on my website, lesliefisher.com. I do have a newsletter you can sign up for. I am offering webinars. I also simply, before we dive into questions and answers, I'm going to click on stop share. I want to thank you for your dedication during this time. Uh, there are a lot of crazy things and a lot of crazy hours that, that you had to work during this time. And I hope you know that myself and so many others appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you spending time with me. Sorry about the, the web burp that we had. These things happen and you know it well. Isabella, my dear, do we have any questions, kiddo? Leslie, that was awesome. Thank you, huh? Tur turtles in Italy. I know I've been keeping a close eye on the chat and there was a lot of excitement about the PowerPoint live translation ugh, translation feature, which makes sense. And some people were wondering how they can access that again. So if to do PowerPoint live, do you want me to take this? You want me to do screen share again? Oh yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I can do that. I can do that. Uh, so uh, just a reminder again that it is only in PowerPoint for the web. And so let's come in here and I'm just going to, because it is, I'm getting really laggy, which is a bummer. These things happen. And it's wanting me to sign in my account. So we'll then choose a different one. There we go. So it is in PowerPoint web. And when you go to PowerPoint web, there is a slideshow option. And when you click on the slideshow option, uh, there is an option that says present live. And that is what we use. So slideshow present live web version of PowerPoint only. While I have this displayed, I'm going to give kudos to another feature in PowerPoint that we didn't talk about. And this is something called presenter coach. And it is also where slideshow is. And what presenter coach will do is presenter coach will toggle on your microphone and it will listen to you while you present. And it will point out if you say something that might be considered not appropriate for other languages. It'll point out if you use filler words like mm and ah. It'll point out if you keep saying the same words like this is awesome. Isn't this awesome? I think this is awesome. This is really awesome, isn't it? It will tell you that. It'll tell you when you're talking too fast. It'll tell you when you're talking too slow. And it also in a newer update, which should be out in the next month or so, will... Uh, look at body language. So if you're too close to the camera, if you're too far away from the camera, uh, it will do that as well. So you have all of these different options. Uh, another one that I'll mention real quick in PowerPoint because uh, I've just been boggled happy with it uh, is that it now has smart templates. So I'm a golfer and I always use the golf example, but if I said new slideshow, blank slideshow, and I title it, I love to golf, it will then create graphics and media that are based on me loving to golf. If I make a bullet list, uh, it will look at the items on the bullet list and add visual icons for each of the items on the bullet list. So, um, so it does all that great stuff, so. Yay, thank you. 
sorry, my, there's my video. Thank you. Uh, yes, because people were just wondering if it's part of regular PowerPoint, but it is it's, on the online. It's on PowerPoint web. And this is something like, for example, that great Kahoot feature that's in there, that's on the desktop version. So there are certain things that because a computer offers more things and, the, and what I've learned uh, from a lot of companies is that when they release a new feature, it goes to the web first because they don't have to worry about the Mac version versus the PC version. So it goes to the web first. And then from there, like closed captions were web only, and now they're on the Mac and the PC. So from there, usually they will work their way into the Mac and the PC. Gotcha. That's a good technological explanation of that. Yeah, because if, especially if they're in a rush and everyone was in a rush, every ed tech company was in a rush to release content. And, and so I think a lot of companies, I'm not sure about, but a, about Kahoot's web-based mainly, but a lot of companies ran to the web first and then you know, worked on differentiation to other platforms. Right. And then let me look here in the chat. I told everyone to drop their questions in there if they wanted me to ask you something. Everyone's just really excited. They say thank you a lot. They love You're you. You're welcome. I feel bad about note because it's okay, but I, I like when things work. <laughs> These things happen. I'm sure the note people will be like, huh, what was this spike at? What was this spike of? <laughs> and I'll be like, what the heck happened? So uh, someone asked, do I use Padlet? Do I use Padlet? I do not use Padlet. Um, I, but once again, I come to you as a presenter of technology and I'm not a teacher in a classroom. As a teacher in a classroom, Padlet, if you're not familiar with it, allows your students to col collaborate almost on like a wall. In fact, Padlet used to be called Wall Wisher. Uh, it's, I think Padlet is great. Uh, I, if you need some way of open collaboration, Padlet is one way to go. Uh, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different options that will give you uh, collaboration there. So, and I just noticed a question for me about Kahoot. So, someone in the chat asked about our new feature, Read Aloud. So today, Leslie went over two new features that involve text to speech. Let me go over those again briefly. So we have one new feature, which is read aloud, which is only available in the Kahoot app. So you need the Kahoot app to use this. And what it means is when you play a challenge or if you use one of the study modes like flashcards, your student can actually have the text, like the answer and the question in the Kahoot read aloud to them. So if they don't know how to read, this is a great feature because they can listen to the question and answer. That is free. That is a free feature. It is in our Kahoot app. Anyone can use it. It's pretty awesome. We're super excited about it. So yes, check that out on the Kahoot app. The other feature Leslie talked about is more of a media type in a Kahoot question. So usually you've been able to add a picture, you can add a YouTube video, and now you can add text to speech. So you can type in some text, like, you know, Leslie writing a turtle in the Italian peninsula, and you type that in, and then when- Which I call Wednesday. Right, right, right. Everyone knows that phrase. And then if when you type it, <laughs> then when, the, when you're playing the Kahoot, that it will actually read that aloud. So the student won't see the text, they'll just hear whatever you typed in. That is a paid feature, okay? But that can be used in the Kahoot app or on the web. That is a paid feature though. The other one in the app, that is free. Okay, hopefully I cleared that up. I'm, I'm done, Leslie, I'll let you wrap up. And then I think uh, Anne will come on to take us to our next session. Thank you so Sweet. much. Educators, I love you. Kahoot, I love you. I love all of you, you happy-go-lucky people, you. <laughs> <laughs>